Hello, this is Kenan Provitt from BlenderBranch.com, back with another visual effects tutorial using Blender. In this tutorial, we're gonna shoot lasers out of our eyes. So let's jump into making heat vision inside of Blender. We're gonna jump right into motion tracking, and we're gonna load in our footage. I'm gonna set the scene frames and prefetch. And now this is me straining to shoot lasers out of my eyes. It's a painful process, I'm sure. I'm gonna set the frames where I just need the mask. So the only parts we're gonna be tracking. Hold down control and left click. And we're gonna track forward. And then it's just a simple process of uh, pressing G to grab the tracker and move it into position anytime it gets off. I move around quite a bit in this footage, so there's a lot of manual tracking frame by frame. You might have to do the same, or maybe you take better footage than I do and you won't have to do the same. You never know. I'm just making some adjustments to this track, making sure it's smooth and it stays pretty well in the center. And in situations like this, you just kind of have to eyeball it, pun intended. I can lock that track by pressing Control L, and there we have an eyeball track. And we're just going to do the same thing with the other eye. Hold down Control and left click and move the tracker. You can do some manual tracking frame by frame if it gets off. Once I'm happy with the track, what I'm going to do is lock it, Control L, and then go into masking. Create a new mask, we can name it Eyes, and I'm going to use a circle mask. Press S to scale down. We're going to parent it to that track. Select the mask, hold down Shift and press Control P. And that stays parented to that track. We're going to do the same thing with the other mask for this eye. Shift, Control, P, and that's parented. Now we should have two circle masks parented to our tracks. Now we have to manually adjust the mask. So let's put automatic keyframes record on, and we can just kind of jump ever so few frames. I like to do 10 and then go back and refine the shape of the eye with that mask. I'm just pressing G to grab. If I want the whole thing selected, if I just want the individual points, just left click and drag. And you wanna make sure you get a pretty well understanding of this shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just go around positioning that mask in proportion with the eye. And we can use these handles too to get nice interesting shapes. And then once we don't need it, we can just move that mask off frame. So now it jumps off and on frame whenever we need it. We'll do the same thing with the other eye. Animate that mask so that it is conforming to the actual eye shape. Because otherwise you don't want a mask that's going rogue. And I'm scaling it down and doing the same, moving it off screen. Two masks tracking to our eyeballs. We can press N, bring up the sidebar. I'm gonna go over here to mask layers. And I want this to be animated on which frames it shows up in the render. So jump to the frame before we want it to start and set a keyframe on that render button. And then the frame after and set a keyframe turning that visible to the render off. I'm gonna jump in the compositor and set up my render layers. So I have a scale node in there so that no matter what the scale is, in the render settings, it will uh, adjust accordingly. I'll leave it at 50%. Now I'm gonna bring in a texture, create a new texture. Let's use blend, I'll name this eye color. And we'll just do ramp only one color and change it to red. I'm gonna drop in a mix node and a mask node. I'm gonna choose our eye mask, set that as the factor of the mix and there we have beady little white eyes. We can change the color, but that's not what we wanna do. We wanna add a texture and use that texture that we created specifically for the eyes. We want to blur this, so I'll drop in a blur node, blur it a couple of times. 
I'll duplicate that node, shift and D, and blur it slightly larger. We'll blur it along the X axis, bigger than the Y, and mix those two together with a add node. And now we can adjust this texture. So let's drop in a color balance. Take the white value up to increase the brightness a bit. We can do things like adjust the color. This is all to taste. You may also want to adjust the actual color of the texture in order to get that nice glow. And already that's starting to look menacing. And you can get different results if you choose different colors. Maybe some of you want to make an ice man. I'd love to see that. All right, now we're just adjusting the factor. All these settings can be tweaked and adjusted to suit your scene. I'm gonna duplicate another blur node, and this time I just wanna do kind of a lens flare. So blur it on the x-axis by 100, and the y and size, very small, three and two. And once we add that in with the mix node, you can see we have that nice lens flare coming out of the eyes, and that's pretty cool. I'm already feeling like Superman. Now we just want to animate this value so that that brightness is completely off at the beginning and we can kind of see that glow fade in. So let's uh, use the color balance wheel. We jump to frame 100 for my scene. I'm going to animate this value right here by pressing I over that gain. And I'll animate that as well by pressing I. Now in the default view, load in our background footage i'm going to go back into motion tracking underneath solve where it has geometry we're going to link empty to tracks that way we can see these in 3d space i'm going to go to top view here by pressing 7 on my number pad shift a to drop in a couple of empties and we want these empties to be pretty well in line with our eyeball tracks and this is going to be the rig that we create for the laser vision so make sure those are lined up pretty well. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a basic rig we're creating here. Now I'm gonna press Shift S and put my cursor at selected. And I'll press Shift A and add in an armature single bone. Now I'll tab into edit mode for that bone and drag the front of it over to that front empty. Lining them up accordingly and it's gonna be huge and look kind of ridiculous, but we're just creating our basic rig here. So lining it up, it's kind of hard to see, but you want it lined up with that front empty there. Once that's done, I know the bone is in place at the end because we put our cursor there. So now I'm gonna hold down shift, right click to select that track and press control P, parent, object, keep, transform. And now I'm gonna set that bone to pose mode, select that track, Hold down shift and press control shift and C and we're going to choose stretch two. And that's going to tell that bone to stretch to that front empty. Now with that bone stretched to that front empty, if I just grab this empty and move it around, you can see that bone moves wherever I move that empty. Haha, -ha, we're getting somewhere. Now you might be thinking that doesn't look like laser vision. Well, let's change this bone to a stick in the display. And there we go. Ha, ah, now you can see what we're doing here. I'm not crazy. We're making some sort of progress. Now let's repeat those steps. Shift S, cursor to selected. Tab into edit mode for that bone and do the exact same thing for the other eye. Moving it in place to the corresponding track. Parent that bone to the initial track and then control shift C, stretch to that front empty. And now that empty is in line with that bone as well. And I like to add in just another plane axis or maybe some arrows. And then we'll do one more parenting. I'll grab these first two empties at the very front, hold down shift, select that front arrows, control P, parent that object. And now all we have to do is move that very front set of arrows and we can move our entire rig wherever we want. And this is very important if you're uh, visual effect of heat vision you have someone looking around in all different directions you need a way to be able to control exactly where they look while also having a way to control the laser shooting out so i'm going to add in a cylinder at the origin of that empty and i'll scale it down to be the size that i want for my laser vision here 
So I'm going to scale this all the way down. And I'm just going to duplicate that cylinder and move it over to the other empty, lining it up with the front of that one. Now I'm going to grab this cylinder, go to the modifiers panel, and add an array modifier. We want the Z axis, so we'll just set that to 1. And we can increase the count so that it extends all the way past our camera. Something like 185 should do the trick. Now let's do the same, apply the same modifier, select that, hold down shift, select the other cylinder, and control L, and we'll be able to copy the modifier, like so. Now we just need to do some adjustments, press R to rotate that to get it to fit right around the bone. It's going to be off a little bit, but that's no problem. Now let's select that bone, hold down shift, select the object, press control P, and choose with envelope weights. We'll do the same thing for the other bone, and now the cylinder moves in proportion to the bone. And we can still maintain that array modifier allowing us to grow and shrink the lasers, which is fantastic. So now what we can do is play with the animation of our heat vision. We can decide when we want them to shoot out and where we want them to go. So I've split my window so I can see from my camera. I'm just going to set the count of the array modifier to zero where I want the heat vision to initially jolt out of the body. A little bit of acting here is important too. You want to kind of do some sort of flinch or something so you have an idea of when to start that heat vision. And it's just a simple matter of pressing I over the count, jumping a few frames, however many frames you want that to take. I kind of made an adjustment here. I wanted to take one more frame than I initially had. And then press I over the count, say all the way up to 185 or however long you need yours to be. And then just by having that value animated, the count value, you can see we have them growing wherever we want. Now I'll just set a keyframe on this front empty that controls our rig and animate where my vision is looking. And you can really go crazy with this. So many different ways you can do it if you have crazy eyes, you can be looking all over the place. Now I'm gonna animate the count for the end so that they kind of suck back into his eye sockets. So I'm just pressing I to set a keyframe and then jump in a few frames, turning it back up to 185, pressing I on that value. So now it retracts back into the eye socket like so. We can play through our animation and we see that the cylinder grows because we have that rig parented to our bones. We can kind of control the entire thing with an empty. And you'll want to refine your animation, pressing I for keyframes, or if you have automatic keyframes set, if you prefer that, you don't even have to press I. You just make adjustments. You'll want to make final adjustments, making sure the base of the laser beam is close to the eye. This is easy to do with automatic keyframes on. Just jump to the frames that are off and press G to grab and move that cylinder back into place. I'm going to go over here to the object settings underneath ray visibility, underneath cycles. I want that cylinder to be visible on frame 99, so I'm going to set a keyframe on the check mark there. Actually, I'm going to uncheck it and set a keyframe for each of those. So now if you press Shift Z, you won't be able to see anything. But then if I jump to frame 100, just animate that value so that it's visible. We'll do the same thing for the end, unchecking on camera where I want it to be visible and just hitting a keyframe for I. I'm going to adjust my render settings. We don't need a lot of samples. I'll just set that to 10 and check transparent so that this all renders on a transparent layer. We need to give our heat vision a material here. So we're going to just choose a basic emission material. Choose a red color, set it to a strength of about 20. And I'm going to use that material for both of them. And you don't want it all the way red. We want to get a nice glow in there, so just a hint of red. Now let's jump into the compositor and we're ready to get the fun going. I'm going to drop in my render layer, but first I want my eyesight to be brighter. So I'm going to drop in a brightness contrast and boost my initial laser vision eyes here. 
setting the brightness to 100, the contrast to negative 100, and I'm going to animate this value. So now you have the effect of those eyes glowing even brighter and it's animated, which is awesome. Okay, now with our render layer in place, I'm gonna hit render and we can press Control Shift and click to view it. I'm gonna blur this render and we're initially gonna do a little bit of smoke and a little bit of heat distortion. So I'm dropping in a mix node, setting the top layer to black. I'm gonna create a new texture, call this heat waves, set that to distorted noise. Choose that in the texture file here and plug it into the bottom of that mix node. I'm gonna set the scale of this, turning it up. This is all to taste. And now you can see where we're going here. I'm gonna drop in a displace node, take everything we've done so far, plug it into the image of that displace and take our little mask that we've created with the distortion, plug it into the vector of the displacement, and we can give this some displacement here. I'll render that out. And you can see if we jump this up to 20, you can see the heat distortion we've got going on there. We just want it to be a little bit, set it at two, and animate the value so that by the time it gets to the end of the animation, it goes to negative two. And that helps with some of the overlapping distortion you might get on your footage. Because the mask is moving from the right side of the screen to the left, we want to animate that value so it goes to a negative value. And that takes care of that issue. So now we have some heat distortion in here, and you can certainly animate this value to your taste and set the different properties to fit your scene. I'm going to press shift and click to get a nice little dot there on the compositor, plug those in. I'm gonna drop in a mix node and take the same blurred mask from our render layer and plug it into the factor of that mix node. We're gonna create a new texture. We're creating lots of these. Name it smoke, set it to clouds, plug it into the bottom of that mix. And now we have some clouds in there. We can adjust the scale so you kind of see what it looks like. And this is just to get us some very cheap smoke. It's very cheap to render. It looks kind of cheap, but when blended with everything else, it fits because heat waves. I don't know if they generate smoke. It doesn't matter. It looks cool if there's a little bit of smoke. So I'm dropping in a color ramp to adjust the value. You don't want it to be too bright. And you can do things like blur this, add some color to this color ramp. There's unlimited amount of things you can do. I'm going to animate the offset, pressing I to set a keyframe on the where I want that offset to start. You want those clouds to be animated so it looks like there's actually some smoke floating around. Once you set yours to taste to fit your scene, you'll have something that looks like this. Now with the heat distortion and our smoke in the scene, I'm gonna tidy everything up here so it's a little more compact. I'm working with my same render layer, control shift and click. I'm gonna drop in an alpha over node, plugging in everything we've done so far to the top and our render layer to the bottom. And there you can see our lasers in over top of our heat distortion and our smoke. I'm gonna set a blur node, very small two and two, plug that into a displace node and plug that same heat waves texture into the vector of the displace and displace it a little bit. I'm gonna drop in a glare node, set it to fog glow. Now you can see we're getting somewhere. Shift D to duplicate that displace node and duplicate the texture node as well. Create a new texture, I'll name this Vision. I'll change it to Magic and check Ramp so that it's black and white. Plug the Magic texture into the vector of that displace. And now we're gonna add these two displacements together with a Mix node, setting it to Add. So now we get some different heat and fire looks going. It's not just a straight beam. We have this uh, distortion going on that we can animate. Basically, you animate everything. The more things you animate, the more distortion, the more mixed up values you get. So all these values, I'm just jumping to the beginning of my animation, setting a keyframe over the value, jumping to the end and setting a keyframe. I can do the same with the offset. That way it looks like it's kind of burning fire that's coming out of my eyes. So I'm just pressing I to set a keyframe, set those to a value, and you can do different values to fit your scene. This is the effect you should have when those two are added together and then composite it in with our alpha over. I like to add a glare node after everything to add some glow. I use the film look underneath color management. 
drop in a color balance node. I like to take my lights to yellows, my darks to blue, and boost my midtones a little and set a slight green hint. I like to take down my saturation a bit, and it's always good to play with the curves to get some nice different color effects going here. This is all to taste, so I'll let you play with that. And that's my node setup for the heat vision. It's not too complex. We have our eyes that we made from our masks and our tracks. We have some heat vision and smoke, and then finally some distortion of the render layer, all composited in using an alpha over node and some basic color correction. All that's left is to choose your directory and hit animation. And you're left with a final heat vision effect. And you can tell all of your friends that you are Superman. This has been Ken and Profit for BlenderBranch.com. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.